People know Eskimos mostly from the eastern Arctic, the igloos, the polar bears, uh, all of these things. And uh, that's how Europeans and Americans knew Eskimos until Edward Nelson went to Alaska. And the, the, the Nelson collection and his ob observations, writings, and, and so on from Alaska uh, revolutionized people's uh, at ideas about who Eskimos were, what they were, what their culture was like. When the Smithsonian got organized and Spencer Baird uh, started the, uh, the big collecting programs, uh, North America was really only known from the eastern part of the United States. And so as the country pushed west into the plains and ultimately into Canada and Alaska, uh, we needed to find out what was there, not only the native peoples, but the natural history. Nelson was a scientist, a naturalist, especially an ornithologist at the Chicago Academy of Natural Sciences and uh, he got to know Baird and Baird recognized the genius of this young scholar and, and Nelson was picked to go up to Alaska. He was called a Signal Corps observer. His official duties were to collect uh, information on the climate and the winds and uh, general information needed for you know strategic issues in Alaska but also for the Smithsonian to make all these collections and he spent four years learning Eskimo language, Yupik Eskimo language, traveling in the country with snowshoes and dog sleds, sending back to the Smithsonian huge numbers of collections, over 10,000 ethnographic objects and many more uh, natural history specimens from birds to animal skins to, to uh, mosquitoes to rocks uh, and so forth. And so his collections are extremely important, not only in anthropology, but for all of natural history. Nelson was only one of many collectors in Alaska. There were a half dozen or a dozen eventually during the, the Spencer Baird era. But his collection was, was one of the very best because he was there for a long period, four, four years, because he documented everything uh, according to natural history standards, which hadn't yet developed in anthropology. So he collected native terminology, the raw materials, the stories related to objects. And, uh, and he wrote these all down in his diary and fortunately published it all in a beautiful major monograph of ethnology. And for all these reasons, that collection is the best documented down to the village level of every ar artifact. Well, Nelson uh, was, uh, while he was stationed at St. Michael, it was a kind of a trading post. He was uh, interacting with the Yupik Eskimos uh, there, and he got some people to, to go with him to travel around the countryside to be a guide and so forth. And as he went to, from village to village, he would uh, stop in the evenings and uh, after, you know, uh, meals and, and welcome ceremonies and so forth, he would open up his little cabinet uh, of, of trade goods. And he, the Smithsonian provided him with very simple things, needles, buttons, uh, you know, uh, stuff that the Inuit people really uh, could use, thread uh, and textile materials and so forth. And he would uh, basically trade for whatever they had to offer. And uh, at first, when he started to do this, they couldn't understand why was he collecting these old, you know, old, old things, the, the, the stuff that they had finished with, that they'd thrown out even. And uh, he acquired this name, the man who collects good-for-nothing things, because they thought that this was kind of silly to receive beautiful, you know, Western goods uh, in return for the cast-off objects of their earlier life. And many of these things had become out of service and, and were not stylistically, uh, you know, sort of modern as from their point of view. But for us, uh, and today, and for the Inuit today, and you pick people, these are treasures from the past. In the early days, the idea was all these cultures would disappear, they would become sort of generalized Americans. It hasn't happened, and people are holding on to their cultures and wanting to learn more from this early material. So we are actually generating a whole new documentation of these collections by bringing people here, by interviewing them, by holding workshops in Alaska, and, and eliciting new information which not only ties to the past, but also shows how these things and the language and, and uh, uh, ideas about the behind the artifacts uh, is inspiring a whole new cultural approach in, in their own culture today. So it's a, it's a very exciting new phase of research.